Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay, where critical thinking can overcome any engineering problem. Today, I'm going to show you how to build a small ship builder platform. It's a pretty interesting concept where you can build a platform to build all your small ships automatically. This is a definite bonus when it comes to building AI drones. If you're out on the battlefield, you'll definitely want to try this out. First, I have the large projector. The only downside to this design is it does not support multiple size grids. So as you may have noticed, I have a large projector set up and a small projector set up. The small projector, you'll find out, won't actually let you build the components, but we'll use it as a rough draft. We'll have to manually put the blocks in and then I'll go over specifically what the settings need to be. I'm not going to spend a lot of time showing you every single setting because there's already a video with that out there. If you check out my small automated ship builder, that video will walk you through all the settings you'll need for this. For now, we're just going to try to get all these blocks built and then we'll run through just a trial run to see if we can have it build our AI drone as it's supposed to. This uses very basic materials. It'll be controlled by two event controllers and six different timer blocks. Not too bad. It does not take any script at all. This is all going to be automated without using any type of coding or anything like that. Don't worry if you're not that into coding. And believe me, it does take time to figure out. This may be the shipbuilder for you. Since this is a small and practical design, that includes its own assembler and two efficiency modules connected to that assembler. You can produce the materials or components you need specifically to build your AI drones. This rotor here is going to be for the projector. We'll get back to it in a minute. Overall, it is a pretty basic assembly, and you could probably put it in several different ways. The construction of it, once you have the concept down of how it will operate, can be manipulated in order to fit, say, on a large ship, so you can create AI drones on the go. In a sense, even though you may be just a solo player, you could build an entire army as you're transferring from one location to another in space. Let's make sure we lock this hinge before we add anything else to it. We don't really want it to move yet. There we go. And throw on a welder on the front. Okay, so that's at least two-thirds of the work already done. We still need to put a small head on this rotor and a connector on the connector refill piston. For the rotor, we're just going to add a small head, make sure it's still locked, your upper and lower limits don't matter, and your rotor displacement should be 11 centimeters. I find if you have it less than 11 centimeters, the small blocks like to interfere with the sidewalls of other blocks. If 
I move this piston, possibly it'll fit through this floor. Sometimes you may or may not have an issue with collision from other blocks. When I first designed this, there were no collision issues, but as you work throughout the game, there are some coding glitches. See, the piston goes right past it. But sometimes the connector doesn't want to, so I have to put the connector on after the fact. There, that should do it. This battery should automatically start charging off our main grid. I'm not going to build any of the other surrounding blocks on this platform. I simply did that. That way our projector would count it as the main entity. So it'll have more blocks than the small block setup. Let's turn off the large projector and turn on our small projector. This will essentially give us the outline that we need for all the small grid items. As you can see, it's currently glowing, but it doesn't actually let you weld. You may see the piston here. Underneath though, it does not make contact. And I have adjusted it several different times. There may be a better way of doing this. If so, let me know in the comments. Also, don't forget to subscribe and check out all the other videos available on here. Now from the piston, we're just gonna add a couple of small blocks as our main structure. and add the small blocks to the base of it. If you're wanting to save on PCU, you don't necessarily have to fill it in all with small blocks. You can keep it open if you want, I just do this for aesthetics. I do enjoy the way they designed this, where at least five blocks wide will fit in the same space as one large block. All right, so we should probably put these timer blocks and event controllers on here before we close the sides up. There's going to be one timer block on this side and two event controllers. Then we'll have two timer blocks on the front. And on top of that, we'll have the small merge block and projector. I do try to keep these colors separate. So my controllers, I typically make black. And my operating equipment, I either keep yellow or orange. That way I can identify which items are going to do any movement at all. And two timer blocks on this side. And that should be all of them. Alright. Looks like it's pretty much done here, so all we need to do is fill in the side blocks. Again, it's just for looks, it's not a requirement. I'm using half blocks on the sides, and then I'm going to use a different style corner block to fill in the corners. A lot of times it's really just for the look of it, even though functionality wise, they're not going to affect anything. Imagine this ship builder will probably be inside of a base or a much larger ship in order to continuously create your army drone. So if that's the case, you really don't care to protect it that much by surrounding it with a bunch of other blocks. However, when you're walking through your ship, it does help to make it look somewhat pleasing so it doesn't drive you crazy every time you see something poking out or not lined up with another component.
to do the rest of it, we'll have to go on the top here. And these are going to be just the half blocks and corner blocks until we get to the very top row. Then you're going to want to use two by one by one slope blocks and one by one sloped half blocks. Otherwise, when you try to move the piston, again, it's just like the large pistons, it'll get hung up somewhere on the edge of those blocks. does take me a moment here to figure it out. If you ever played Tetris, it was a great game, but I wasn't that great at it. If there were a better way to simply build this section and then be able to import and attach it separately, that would be cool also. So if anybody has a great idea out there, how to incorporate this small block grid on the large block grid to make this more efficient, please let me know. Here's our angled block. Ooh, that's the wrong size. This is kind of the wonky part. Because you're working with large grid next to a small grid, your block size likes to change a lot. And then I think we just need a couple of corner pieces and just to close this the rest of the way off really you don't have to make a complete top to this but i have a tendency if i'm walking around my ship with a gravity generator i end up falling in holes if i don't cover them up so in order to prevent this tripping hazard i usually try to fill it in so it's flush with the ground I think I messed up a block here. This should be the corner block again, and then a two by one by one slope after that, since we don't have anything connected to the back of the projector piston. Okay, let's see if it all comes together. I think I covered the end piece here. The left side would definitely get stuck if there's a block. Hmm, that doesn't look right. Oh yeah, I wasn't supposed to put this other block on the other side. Now we got it. This one should be the angled block instead. Same with the left-hand side here. Now I will be saving this small grid on the Steam Workshop. So if you can't really tell which blocks I used, it'll be a lot easier if you just use a blueprint by setting up your projector and projecting it and then copying it. But for the most part, that's it. It fills in just like a regular block. The next task, since we have everything else built, I think is to go through, make sure certain things are off. We don't need the small projector anymore. Then we'll work on labeling everything.
All right. Again, I'm not going to walk through every single step of programming every block. We're just going to go through and rename each one of these. So when you do look at the information that I post, it would be much easier to follow along. For the most part, they're all going to start with small ship build. So small ship build hinge. But this is for the welder, so I like to say what it does in the name of it. Makes it a lot easier to keep track of. So this projector should be our small ship build projector because the other one was doing the small grid so we could build the small ship builder. Then of course your timer blocks. And this is also a good way by going through and relabeling everything to make sure you have all the components that are required. Typically I find at least one thing I was missing. Such as I only have five timer blocks so I definitely want to add another one of those. Let's get rid of these. Also, if you're not using something directly, I would just not show it in the terminal so it doesn't confuse you later. That looks like everything besides adding that timer block. Worst case, we'll put the time to block and double check it again. I think I should be able to put it in right from here. It just goes on top of the other one. There we go. And again, we have to go back in to make sure we label that one correctly as timer block six. So we can take another look and label everything else appropriately. Oh, yep, forgot this piston here. This is the projector piston that we added. And finally, the welder. I'm not sure how I missed that the first time. Must have been scrolling too fast. Oh, also forgot the connector. Okay, with everything finally labeled, I'm just going to go ahead and set all the configuration up without having to walk you through every single step. And then after that, we're gonna give it a try. The micro AI small ship that we're gonna be building is basically a micro AI assault drone. It comes with an offense and defensive setup. So when you run it, this AI could be programmed to say, once it's built, go directly to a GPS location and then start either a combative or a defensive mode. As you can see, this is real time play. I did not speed up the video or anything. And this is how fast it can build one of these drones. Fairly quick. The unique and interesting thing about this small ship builder is as it goes through the motions, you'll see that the small refill connector comes online, 
the ship is disconnected and then reconnected, filled with ammunition and uranium. So while this is finishing retracting, I'll just show you that it actually filled it automatically. I have it set for four seconds and that seems to be the only amount of time it really needs. So your auto cannon is currently loaded in your small reactor. I misspoke earlier, this is a micro AI auto cannon. I also have a micro AI assault cannon. It's a little bit different and the range is farther, but for the most part I wanted something that was small and easy to use. And that's it. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments section, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I appreciate it.